On this week's show, we are joined by Matt Dabrowski, a man who simply wants to watch the world burn. Oh, <laughs> and he's also the creator of Streets of Rogue, your new favorite game of all time. Brazil hosts an unofficial Nintendo Direct and showcases 25 Brazilian games. Meanwhile, Nintendo officially announces a new Switch. Sort of. Again. Speaking of official, we have confirmed, we have a confirmed release date of Luigi's Mansion 3, and it sure is spooky, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, the Hype Zone delivers a knockout punch to your childhood. This is Nintendo Dual Screens, episode 108. Everybody, welcome to Nintendo Dual Screens episode 108 for the week of July 22nd, 2019. I am one of your hosts, Stephen Fontana, and with me as always is Andy Asimakis, who is who is just blown away by how well I did that cold read of his intro. And I could tell because he, of the heavy breathing. How are you, Andy? <laughs> now, is a Brazilian more than a zillion? That's a lot of games. It's a lot of fucking games. 25 Brazilian, <laughs> Five Brazilian games. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I, I wasn't really, didn't really pay attention to that. And uh, our guest this week is uh, Matt. How are you, Matt? Hey there. I'm not bad. Thank you for having me on. It's awesome to have you. Uh, super excited. Uh, so this whole thing happened really quickly from at least from from my end i don't know andy how long you were talking with matt and, and the team over there like i don't, I don't know but it was like two emails and it, it was over it, there was there was a tweet <laughs> it, it was a tweet there was a tweet email with the game and i was like oh wow that looks really good and then like 15 minutes later we had you booked for the show it was, it was insane yeah. <laughs> it was like it was lightning speed well uh, the exact order was oh what's coming out this week oh yeah this game let me email matt <laughs> oh wait i'll check his twitter oh i'll retweet him and mention him and be like oh come on the show and now we're here and that's how we make magic folks that's, all, that's our whole process it's a science really when you think show, about yeah. it when you think about it <laughs> well for those of you that are new to nintendo dual screens podcast just like matt is uh this is an interview show where andy and i bring on an industry guest to talk indies and nintendo's past present and future nintendo dual screens posts each and every monday for your listening pleasure on your podcast service of choice including iHeartRadio, spotify and youtube and of course on dual you can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash NDS podcast, just like our Patreon producer, the Grandmaster himself, Alex Gonzalez. Thank you very much, Alex. Cannot continue to grow without your support. So thank you. Thank you, as always. Remember, every dollar helps. And uh, more importantly, if you like what we do here on Nintendo Dual Screens Podcast, the best way to support us is to share the show with your friends and on social media and help spread the word. All right. That's on you guys. You got to do it. Also, if you are an Apple podcast listener, please head over to the reviews section. Give us a little review. I will read it on the show, which we have one that we definitely want to read. Uh, Andy, maybe we'll it, do, you know what? I'm going to bring, I'm going to pull that up right now because it, it changed my life. It, it's it was, a, it was, it was a life changing review. It was sure. like going to church. It was like a sermon. It was, it was, <laughs> by the way, folks, if you hear loud, grumbling and, and crashing and whatever, there is quite the storm happening right now. So, uh, that's, that's what's happening here in, in the old Brooklyn, New York city, as it were, uh, internet's being real slow. So this could be a problem. All right, here we go. Here's the review. This is from an anonymous reviewer. That's how we like it. Right. That's how we like our, our reviews. Uh, <laughs> What a special show, five stars. Listen, I enjoy plenty of podcasts, but never have I experienced something so joyful and pure that it actually burned the cancer out of my body. Andy and Steve inspired me to call my mom again after 20 years of not speaking. I found Jesus because of this podcast. I showed this podcast to my friend who was having trouble sleeping, and after listening to one episode, he slept for 27 straight hours. Seriously, it's a really... Uh, it, it's really good. See what miracles you will experience when you give Nintendo dual screens a chance. It'll change <laughs> your life. Jeez, high praise. Wow. <laughs> right? We, we should have this guy take over our Twitter account and just <laughs> run the show. 
<laughs> very creative and also i really hope none of that was true except for the fact that he likes the show um <laughs> So, <laughs> so yes, you can support us on Patreon. And uh, speaking of Patreon, we do have we do a giveaway each and every week. All right, as part of one of the goals that we hit on Patreon, we give something away every week. And this week, we were giving away a copy of Professor Lupo and His Horrible Pets, which we had the the creator Alesh on last week. Now, we are recording this way earlier than we normally do, so we don't know the winner as of this recording, but. I am going to kick it away to future me, who's going to tell you the winner of the contest. So take it away, future Steve. Thank you, uh, uh, present Steve. Uh, it, I got to be honest, the situation you are in over there is way better than the situation that I'm in over here right now. It is, it is way, way too hot. It is 96 degrees, and, and my children have lost their minds. But let's get to the winner, shall we? Click, 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 bloop, bloop, bloop. The winner is Sam B., at SJB6991. Now, you, it says you're located in the UK. Hopefully, we can get you a European or EA, whatever the hell code name that is. Yeah, but anyway, you won. Sam B, SJB6991. Thank you for entering. And uh, 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 present Steve, back to you. Thank you, future Steve, and congratulations to whoever you are that won. What a fantastic... <laughs> fantastic what a, thing. what a great person that won what, a, that what a great winner the a retweet person. extraordinaire just the best retweeter there ever was and that and that's no hyperbole bowl uh you could be a part of the show by emailing <laughs> your comments questions and concerns the feedback at nds podcast and boy i know you have concerns speaking of andy stop emailing your concerns the feedback at nds podcast.com i have so many concerns so many concerns all right yeah. before we get into the lead story in the nintendo news report and before matt just decides to uh press that hang up button Let's get blame into the weather. everybody's. Yeah, blame it. it was <laughs> lightning. Yeah, lightning's over here too, guys. Um, everybody's favorite new segment, and that is the Nindies of the Week. Andy, what do you got for our Nindies of the Week segment this week? I don't think you want to know what I'm playing this week. Oh, I I don't. It's one of those games. Oh no. You know it's that Sanran Kagura pinball sexy anime oh, girl game. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that an indie? Is that considered an independent game? Is I think no, but it's it's just so much fun. It's so stupid, and I don't know why. It's listen, the gay men love boobies. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I'm drawn to the boob, even as a gay man. I just love seeing them. Were, were, bounce you, around. were you pulled off of your mother's bosom too early as a child? I, I, I may have been. I don't know. Are you? I'm not sure. Bosom? But it's just it's so what outrageous. Is, what is this game? It's, it's it's just a, it's a pinball game, but there's anime titties everywhere. Right. That's like the sales pitch. Right. That's all it is. It's just a pinball game with with boobies. Boobies. Wait right. a second. Have, se- have sexy anime games taken over the the Switch as well? Because I mean, like, you look it's at the Steam new. I mean, they had like the volleyball game, so it's like yeah, because they don't have a censorship policy, Nintendo. So like yeah, whatever you want to do is throw it on there. We don't care. Oh, wow, times have changed. This is not uh-huh. the Mortal Combat era anymore. Oh no, God, no. <laughs> no. It turns out they like money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out Nintendo's like, no, there are a lot of really, really sick degenerates out there that we can make <laughs> millions of dollars off of. Throw it on there, no problem, no problem. Yeah, oh, you got jiggly boobies? Yeah, no problem. That's 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 nothing. <laughs> that's great. The Americans will love it. They'll eat it up. So, uh, yeah, I'm playing a bit of that, and today I just picked up Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Oh, no, you got it early, you bastard? Yeah, so, so can you. We live like in the same area-ish, yeah. in the same state, same city. I, I, think I was going to go digital on that You one. know the exact store I get it from. Yeah, I do. So, you know, you're, that's, you're, that's your own damn you're a bad person. You're a bad person. No, <laughs> fair enough. We're both bad people. Matt, are you are you playing any Nindies that, that people should know about? <laughs> oh, Streets God, the only Nindie I've I've played in ages is, well, yeah, Streets of Rogue. That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> no, no, I, I got uh, I got my eye on some, you know, like, um, I mean, I don't think nothing that nothing that recent. I kind of want to play that. Was that Wonder Boy? The Wonder Boy game that oh, came out like game, last yeah. year. The one that looks that looks really nice, and it's just like the Master System game, but but like gussied up, and you can switch back and forth between the two of them. That looks pretty cool. Um, you have to check that out once I get some actual time. But uh, I don't know what's I don't know what's been coming out lately. You'll have to fill me in. Well, th- don't worry. That's going to segue right into our next little uh, segment here, oh. which is the releases of the week. And in case you're wondering, yes, I am skipping what I'm playing because I'm still playing what I played last week because it's been like two and a half days. So it's uh, <laughs> since, since our last recording. So yes, that's what I'm doing. Okay, sorry about it. Sorry, not sorry. You know what I mean? 
Roll it, roll tide. All right, so here is what's coming out this week on the, the Nintendo Switch Entertainment System. Oh, you know what? Before we go on, I want to say a hearty congratulations and welcome to the family because Maltese, one of our one of our most loyal listeners and friends of the show, finally bought a Nintendo Switch after listening to the show for two years. So. Okay, it took him that long. Congratulations, Multi. I'm pretty sure he wanted to for a long time, but it was like these assholes are making me so anti-switch right now. I'm gonna hold off on this purchase. <laughs> he uh, not too long ago he <laughs> said he, he was thinking that he would wait for a new switch announcement. Then the switch light was announced, so he said, Okay, I don't want that. So and then he said, he, fuck all. Right. And he bought a so he bought the, the OG, OG and then spoiler alert, they announced the new OG. So there you go. All right, so we got on 723, we have run the fan. Okay. I don't know what that is. Uh, we have uh, Power Power Rumi. Power Rumi. Power Rumi. Is that how you say that? I think that's how you say that. Hey, Battleship is coming. That's a big, big time game. Big time stuff there. Is that Battleship the game? The movie? The game? <laughs> I wonder. Uh, is that is that Liam Neeson Wait, on the cover? I can't Liam tell. Neeson? That existed. <laughs> that, that did exist. I, I God, I, I completely <laughs> forgot about that movie. That did exist, though, right? It, it, when, did. When was it, was like, it was like a Transformers movie, basically. That's what it yeah. was. Yeah. Andy was Power that? Roomy looks pretty cool. Wow. Yeah. When was that movie? In the two thousands? I think. I think the twenty tens. Yeah. Uh, huh. Jeez. Oh, yeah, wow. That was a problem. That sounds. That sounds to me like a twenty. 12 to 2014 uh, yeah you know, like in the you know, wake of transformers of ideas <laughs> yeah <laughs> right uh fantasy strike is coming out uh, that is 30 dollars. that's coming out on the 25th we have Wol- wolfenstein uh young blood that's that's a fun fun time usa yeah, right no, there. Price tags, so no price tags. look at that brands yeah. just free you just download it right now uh right in or right in uh v director's cut I don't know if it's V or 5. I have no idea how many of those games there were. I'm a little out of loop on that. Uh, Caged Garden. Okay. Say it. All right. (laughs) Say it. Caged Garden Cop Robin. (laughs) The Caged Garden Cock Robin. Now, is the cock named Robin or is it a cock Robin? I think it's a cock Robin. Is it a a Caged Garden Cock? I I I think it's a verb. You're cock Robin. Uh huh. Yeah. It's the Cage Garden Cock Robin. Right. I don't, I mean, so there's no colon you're, here. Right. Do you have any information about this game? What uh, is the heck is this? Let's right click and open this in a new tab, shall we? Let's take, take a little journey into the Cage Garden Cock Robin. All right. We're talking about boobs. We're talking oh about my dicks. Lord. Okay. This, is, this is how it goes in the podcast. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> a multi ending system in which selection changes ending. I'm just reading this verbatim. After seeing eight endings, what is waiting? Dash dash dot 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 question mark. A girl who was apprenticed to an old castle rumored as a nest of monsters. She witnessed, quote, something heteromorphic, end quote, which roamed around there. Dick monsters. Although, <laughs> all, <laughs> dick monsters. Although people in the castle call it, quote, Commodore, end quote, nobody tries to talk details. Robin, alone, starts investigating the hidden truth, but uh, and there's seven periods after that. Quote, it's all right even if it's right. It's all right even if it's wrong. End quote. New quote. If I can choose only one path by which I won't regret, it's for me comma dash 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 end quote well i'm not not intrigued i mean <laughs> is this is this a rape simulator what the fuck get, is going on in this video I don't game this, if it's even right it's wrong even if it's wrong it's right <laughs> there's there's a screenshot that says choice where am i who are you why am i in bed <laughs> <laughs> oh my god the Caged Garden Cock Robin. All right. Fire Emblem. Th- oh, no. Zombie Driver Immortal Edition is coming out as well. Uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Again, there really matters this week. Let's be honest. Titans Pinball <laughs> rounds out the week with Fire Emblem. So, but does it have boobies? 
Titan uh, Sin Ball. I don't think so. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Caged Garden Cock Robin might be I'm buying it. the I'm greatest buying that game, game of all time. I'm buying it. Can you please record your gameplay so that we can yes. do a video on YouTube? Because nobody yes. on planet Earth is going to be making a YouTube video about that video game. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, don't man. know YouTube at all. Yeah, I just looked it up. So it's like a visual novel, right? Uh, right. I guess. Like yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. It's a cock robin. Maybe. Yeah. Um, which we've, sa- we've gotten a cock robin. Cock robin sounds like a 1946 rock and roll song. Like right before <laughs> the rock and roll was huge. It was like, let's. what are we going to sing about? How about that cock robin, man? Yeah, let's sing about the cock robin. Cock I want robin. A sign cock, cock over my robin. door that says gone cock robin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. It's a play back on words. In, back, back in five minutes. <laughs> oh, good lord! All right, well, that's going to lead us into the lead story, which is all about Streets of Rogue. Uh, Matt, you you did that. That's a thing you. Yeah, did. yeah, I guess so. I know it's weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> you did a beautiful thing there, Matt. A beautiful, wonderful thing, and I thank you for it. Oh well, thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I I am ignorant to Streets of Rogue because I have not had a chance to do anything or any any sort of like this. I'm telling you, getting you on the show sprung sprung on me really quickly. So for me and for our listeners who don't know what Streets of Rogue is, give us the little pitch. Give us the elevator pitch. What is it? Sure. Well, see, this is the issue. There really is no like succinct elevator pitch to the game. I it's know. a really <laughs> weird, hard game to describe. So, but I'll, I'll try to give you an idea of what the gameplay is like. So, you get dropped into a city which is procedurally gen- generated. It's like a top-down kind of like Zelda-style view, but it plays more it, well. It's kind of like Grand Theft Auto meets Deus Ex. Um, it's like so you get dropped into this procedurally generated city. You get some objectives like you might have to neutralize a person you might have to steal something from a a building you might have to escort someone uh you know rescue a prisoner and escort them somewhere and uh, the idea is that you have a lot of different ways that you can complete these tasks Uh, like for example you know you if you're a soldier you could just go in and and murder everybody you could shoot everyone with your gun uh if you're a thief or like an assassin or someone you could use stealth and you know maybe go up and backstab people uh, if you're a hacker you could hack computers uh you could put things in the in in the vents of the building and you know poison people uh the idea is just to give the player a whole lot of choice in how they want to approach the the different aspects of the game um, and also you can play, it's, it's mostly, mostly balanced around single player, but you can play with multiple players, either, uh, locally or online up to four players actually. And, uh, you know, you can wreak havoc together and, you know, find, you know, all kinds of combinations of ways to, to merge your strategies together with different character classes and, uh, and, you know, be more effective that way. Uh, so I think that about sums it up. So how do you, so, so how does like the character, uh, creation and or selection, how does that work? Is that like b- b- before each level? Is it like when you start the game? Like how, how does that kind of character uh, yeah, yeah. progression so, start? So this is, this is a rogue light. Uh, basically how it works is you, you, you choose a character, you know, you have like 24 character classes or you can create your own and that character throughout the, throughout the run, uh, that character continues to gain abilities and things and items and become more powerful. And then if they die, you know, you basically lose everything and have to start again. But you can also unlock things on your way, sort of like an Enter the Gungeon or, or Binding of Isaac. So uh, you get this currency in the game called Chicken Nuggets. Uh, yeah, Perfect. sure. Yeah, Chicken All Nuggets. Right. Yeah. So so as, as you get Chicken Nuggets, you can go back to your home base and unlock things like... Um, uh, uh, new traits that can appear in the game, or new items that can appear in the game, and that's how you kind of make uh, make progression. And oh, new characters also. You you start off with like eight character classes available, I think, and then you can get up to twenty four. So, um, so, so yeah, all is all is yeah, all is not lost if you die, basically. So before we get into like you know Andy's game, the experience questions, I want to know a little backstory on this because this sounds like this sounds like a game was started like you started making a game and then you just kept getting more ideas and just piling on top of like these uh, original mechanics and then like it kind of just snowball snowballed out of control and so wow that was loud lightning that was quick that was right I here didn't, I didn't hear lord oh my whoa. see my parent that little side note my parents house was struck by lightning in 2011 uh, while i was at work my my uh then girlfriend now wife at the time was like in the basement and like it was flash boom and then maybe an hour later fire so like oh i God. still get i get compl- i get like freaked out when it's really loud and, and bright lightning so anyway yeah. um 
So can you speak a little bit on how these mechanics all kind of blend, uh, started to blend together? Was it something that you always set out to do? Was that, was that your original plan? Or was it something that kind of just, it was like a happy accident type type situation? Yeah, I mean, the original plan was always to have this kind of emergent gameplay where there's all these kind of things that you can do in the game. And, uh, you know, you can, you know, things happen that maybe the develop me, me, the developer didn't anticipate, um, you know, just, just like a kind of, you know, like a, I guess in typical Deus Ex ish uh, fashion, um, uh, but um, the way that all came together was well, it just took a really long time to make, like five and a half years, uh, I think, just because, uh, in large part, just because, yeah, when you when you throw this many elements into the mix, um, making them all kind of work well together is like when you play the game, it might not be it might not be evident. But uh, like a lot, a lot of time went into like bug fixing and polish and just making everything, you know, work smoothly. Um, uh, So, yeah, it it was yeah just a lot of like polish and bug fixing and listening to a lot of user feedback to get it to where it was. Um, This game started off in Steam Early Access or actually even before that it was free even before Early Access. It's it's been available to people for about almost four years now uh, on the on the Internet. And uh, I had this. This within the game, there was a user feedback form, so you could just click something, and people could just submit feedback to me anytime, and it would just go directly to my email. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, so yeah, it's it's, it's scary and uh, and fun at times and rewarding, but also uh, most most people are pretty nice, actually. Uh, can, surprisingly, can you give us an instance on something that uh, maybe you definitely wanted? to be in this game that through the years of feedback just decided that it, it wasn't going to be possible or was there any situation like that or was it like just additive and no no subtraction i mean very little actually as far as like i mean i i knew from this like there's things that people have asked for over time that i knew would never be in the game like cars for example animals uh you know every, everybody in the game is a human being except for the gorilla but you know he's kind of right. he kind of walks on two legs in the sure. game but um yeah, aside from major, fe- you know, things like uh, I wanted, I always wanted to have like leaderboards online. But aside from, but in the actual gameplay itself, there's very little that that um, that I had wanted that I had to cut. I'm trying to think of specific examples. I mean, there's definitely things I still want to add post-launch, um, but uh, um, yeah, whatever you, yeah. you 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 could think about it. I mean, I, I was just curious because with game like one of the the, the situations that happens with a lot of uh, devs is that like they may have this this huge idea and then it's all about trimming it down to make it you know workable like something like that and it seems yeah, like you no, I didn't the complete that, no. opposite way. <laughs> yeah. uh, Andy, let's get you involved in this conversation if you don't mind, unless your computer froze and you're gone uh, forever. Yeah, I want to frame this conversation with the uh, the chicken nugget as the backdrop. Right. Okay. Sure. Because yeah. you know we mentioned the chicken nugget. But we've yet to say how the the main foe in this game is a mayor who has banned chicken nuggets from the city. I mean, yeah. That's your main He's a goal. real piece of shit is what he is. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess my first question is, Matt, why why the chicken nugget? I honestly I just thought it was a very amusing <laughs> currency. So here's the th- here's the thing. Um I don't know. It's been said before that the word chicken McNugget uh, or McNugget <laughs> is actually like one of the funniest words in the English language. I mean, that's I, I didn't use McNugget, but still, I mean, nuggets like halfway there. The fact um, that McNugget is a word like is that is that something that's in the dictionary right now? Is that a thing? I, I don't know, I don't but know. Um, apparently, like it got like one of the biggest laughs ever on the Johnny Carson show. Apparently, was um, was uh, involved the use of the word McNugget. So <laughs> I was just like chicken nuggets. That's pretty funny. I'll just put that in there. Um, People seem to appreciate. It. I mean, the. I mean, I could have used any other kind of currency, but I was just like, yeah, whatever. I mean, nothing in the game makes any sense, anyways. So, oh, it it really does not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have a bullet point here that says you can throw toilets at people. Yeah. And that's all it says. Yeah. That's, that, that's the only bullet point, and it says just that. Yeah, so it was pretty I, much just like like if if it sounds cool, I'll just throw it in there. I'll find a way to make it work. You know, <laughs> throw toilets, whatever. Every, so I guess everything, including the, things, the kitchen sink. Right. right of course. One of the things about the game that really caught me off guard was, again, it's really zany and over the top, but it has a really sophisticated AI system yeah. that does not put up with your crap, quote mm-hmm. unquote. <laughs> so what was that process like making this AI and how, how important was it to make it as responsive and reactive as it is in the game? 
Well, it was super important, actually. I mean, when I first started development, you know, back in late 2013, I, I didn't know anything about artificial intelligence. And that was actually the first thing I started working on because I knew that the AI would need to be really on point for this thing to work at all. Like you couldn't be just exploiting the AI all over the place. It had to, it had to, you know, be able to react in a lot of different ways in a lot of different situations. And uh, you know, even right, even today, I mean, it's still a work in progress. People are always finding little AI bugs uh, all over the place. Um, there, there. I mean, a ton of work has been has been done on it, but there's still probably going to be a ton of work done on it in the future because it'll never be, it'll never be perfect. It'll never be able to react to anything. But um, yeah, it's just continuing to get, been been continuing to get polished for the entire cycle of development. Um, but yeah, it's it's super crucial for this game to work and it's probably the reason why you don't see um a lot of well i mean this is from to the best of my knowledge the only rogue the only rogue light that has this kind of ai that works like a more like a bethesda game or something like that um and i think the reason for that uh, or one good reason is is that yeah it's just really hard to pull it off so yeah it's, yeah really really tough to do yeah, I get like tones of like like a CD project or like a Witcher kind of game with this. It's like just that level of everything you do can have some sort of impact on what's happening all around you. Yeah. And, and also the fact like also when you mention games like Deus Ex, they, they they wished it had this level of detail and player freedom. Just put get that out there, you guys. Cause this game is <laughs> you can do so much shit in this game. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That's it's it's high praise. Yeah, like um, yeah, that that was that was the the idea behind it. Uh, to be fair, they only had like what a two year development cycle. Uh, but but uh, yeah, but you're still just one guy. At the end of the oh, day, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I guess it is kind of impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's talk about that a little bit because that is something that uh, every once in a while we'll we'll get a you know a, a solo dev or you know uh, we just had um. Uh oh! What the what the hell's? I'm so bad with remembering names, Matt. I'm gonna forget you in a week, and it's believe me, it's not. It was it was Nick Gregory, Nick from Nick, right. Pixel Nicks. I, yeah, I kept I kept I saying Greg in my head. I'm like, no, it's not Greg. Um, yes. Yeah, so he he essentially just hired a couple of people to help him with like some background art and you know music and stuff like that. Uh, so what was the situation with you as far as uh, development? Like, how much did you do? Did you outsource anything? What was that like for you over the last five and a half years? Yeah, so I mean, for the first, I'd say uh, two, two and a half years or so, it was just me solo in kind of a bubble. And then uh, when the game became uh, like a public thing and people started knowing about it, I started, um, I started to uh, outsource some stuff, like uh, uh, the environmental art in the game, like all of the walls and floors that you see are done by a guy named Matthew Weeks. Uh, and then Craig Barnes did all of the the music and sound effects for the the game, um, and. Then I brought on uh, Tiny Build, uh, the uh, the publisher, you know, who handles all of the uh, the marketing and promotion and all that stuff, and uh, a lot of the um, we love Tiny Build, a lot of the, lot of the, lot of the hookups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you, you've, have you have you had contact with them before? We, we went to Pax East. We we hung out with the in, in the booth and got to know some people. So yeah, good. Oh yeah, yeah. They're they're real they're real cool guys. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then sort of later in the process, uh, brought on. Uh, this porting studio play everywhere to help out with the uh, the console versions. So um, so it wasn't it wasn't just me, but as far as like the the full time like development, like most of the design and most of the the code that went into the game uh, was ju- yeah just just me uh, here, and I continues to be me as like a as like the as like a full time thing. This has been my full time job since uh, early 2015. We we have a couple of friends that that are you know getting into game dev and and or have been doing it for years, but like have have find have struggled to find their rhythm as far as getting th- things out and and finishing projects. So what 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 advice would you give to either a novice game developer or somebody who who's who's talented but is trying to do this by themselves? What what kind of advice would you give them? See, see, that's an issue. I know that a lot of people, a lot of people have that. Just it's easy to start stuff and uh, not easy to finish things because you know it, it is a lot more fun when you're starting out working on a project. And you know, as you as you get towards the end, I mean, I've spent the past seven months or so just like polishing, polishing and fixing bugs. And it's like, when do I get to add new content and stuff? But you know, if you want to release a game, this is what you have to. This is what you have to do. So I I totally understand. Like you get 
starts out fun, gets gets dull. But um, I don't I don't know. Like um, I don't really have like I I I don't really have any make any great advice for this other than like uh, hopefully the project you're working on is you know enticing enough for you that that uh, or, or I mean I've worked on projects that I just didn't like that much, and that's when it's that's when it's harder to actually kind of finish what you start this right. one i didn't really have that that problem with i never had like a motivation problem uh with it but just in general in my in my career like it's been hard for me to kind of oh i see that lightning out there um whoa holy uh, crap i heard yeah. that one <laughs> yeah santa claus shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just like uh it's always been hard for me to to uh really do my best on on things that i'm not like 100 percent behind so yeah, hopefully, hopefully you like your game enough that that you can be 100 percent behind it, and maybe that'll keep you more motivated. I guess. But, At uh, what point did you say to yourself, "This game is ready to come out of early access"? It's like, okay, it's been five years. It's like I've chugged along. I, I've made, I've made it. It's, it's, it's ready now to be like a full thing. I don't think there was ever really a point when that happened. There was a point last year when um, uh, we thought for a bit that the game would need to be out on Xbox by the end of 2018. So I started. Like I was like, okay, I need to really wrap this 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 thing up. But um, uh, I mean, I was hoping to have it done much more quickly. But I mean, it never it never really feels finished to me. It's just there. Yeah, there wasn't really a point, a specific point I can pinpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, but at some point, you just kind of have to say, okay, this is this is enough for like a one point release, and I can keep adding content after this. But there's there's enough here that that people uh that people are going to, you know, get their $20 worth. And, and I think it reached that point. Um, oh, for sure. I, I feel that I've gotten so much out of this game than most okay. games that charge you know, twice as much, maybe three times. <laughs> oh, great. Well, great to hear. So is there like a roadmap for what's happening down the line for future content or updates or additional characters, for example? Yeah. Honestly, I've never had a roadmap. People have asked me about that a lot, and the the answer is just like I have a big list of things that I can potentially add to the game, and I kind of just add uh, add stuff based on what I think I'd like to add and what other people are kind of itching for at the time. You know, if I realize like I haven't added uh, any new characters in a while, I'll be like, oh yeah, I should I should probably get to get to that. So, yeah, I'm actually not sure what I'm going to start adding first when it comes to content. Um, uh, that's that's kind of a kind of a mystery. It, at this point, even to me, um, but you know what I hear helps a public Trello board. So if you can just make one of those public Trello so I've boards, heard. so I've heard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep us in the loop because you know, forward facing, you know how it is. Um, so where, um, so tell tell everybody where they can purchase streets. Oh, wait, are we wrapping up this already? Still? I have a uh, question from one of our, tw our Twitter. Oh, followers. that's right. That's right. We did get questions. Like, I apologize. Hey, that I'm so, I'm like, so, hey, we're, not, we're not done yet. I'm just, just trying to move the, sh the, the, the little, the little paddle boat along. That's all this, this little beautiful <laughs> doggy paddle boat. Um, yes, go ahead. Read, read our, our question. Cause I did, yes, I did see a, that we, we got have some. a question from Alex Van Aken, our good friend at OK Beast podcast. Okay. He asked two com. questions. Yes, two questions. He asks, "What sort of ground do you typically cover in pre-production, and how thorough are your design documents before starting production on a new game?" Oh, I mean, well, this has been the major thing that I've been involved with for the past five and a half years. So, like, starting a new game. I mean, this was like the only game I've started in the past. Like, well, <laughs> one of the only two games I've started in the past decade. So, um. Pre-production, uh, I mean, non-existent. I just sort of jumped in and started. <laughs> I, I mean, like, no, I learned like I was reading like a book about AI, um, and you know, I read up a little bit about procedural generation. And I was like, okay, I gotta gotta get these two things working, and then you know, I mean, yeah, I just pretty much just jumped in. Um, as far as design doc, I mean, I just kind of like added to it as I as I went along. Um, you know, I didn't really start out with a whole lot. I had a general idea of what the game was going to be, and it turned out pretty close to what I thought it was going to be, actually. Um, but, I mean, as, as a solo person, uh, I, I think there's less of a need for that kind of stuff since it's all just kind of in my head anyways. Um, right. So, uh, yeah, does that answer, the, uh, did I, did yeah, I answer both? Yeah, both? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a great answer. <laughs> Um, let me let's check you the. Uh, hoping us all. <laughs> I'm going to check the Discord to see if there's any other questions that I missed. Um, so while I open that, Andy, if you have any other questions that you would like to ask, 
Well, yeah, I think one free. of the key things we like to ask her on the show is, what's it like seeing your game on a Nintendo platform? That's weird. Really, uh, really surreal, <laughs> I have to say. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, yeah, whoa, this this thing is actually here on this Nintendo Nintendo handheld. This is blowing my mind right now. Like, because uh, actually, it's funny. I, I actually didn't even get to see it running on the Switch until until like March uh, when it was, I, I don't actually have a dev kit at my house. Um, I never, I never ended up getting one for whatever reason. Um, so like, you know, the, the porting team had been working on it for some, for some months before that. And I finally got to try it out in switch and I was like, Oh God, yeah, this, this is, this is streets of rogue on the switch. This is, this is pretty cool. Um, they're like, yeah, we got this. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome sauce. So yeah, all right. So then let, let's let's tell everybody where they can get this because I feel like that is it, people need this to is know. a stream in the making between both of us. Oh, I know. Time. Well, either stream or as we had mentioned, we were thinking about moving Tuesdays with Andy and Steve to be a weekly YouTube show so that we can either way be a little bit more polished. But still, Tuesdays with Andy and Steve on Twitch does sound. This sounds like a perfect opportunity uh, for us to run around and, and oh, and to confirm, I, we can play online on yes, the switch. Yes. Matt, Matt had okay. mentioned this at the top and it, just, well, you never know. Sometimes it's only went off and yeah. it's always like, oh, wait, not on the switch. True. But yeah, this is, this is good. So PS4, Xbox, steam, yeah, switch, PS4, Xbox, steam, switch. Um, you can get it on all the, the e-shops for those uh, different consoles. There's no physical release yet. We'll uh, maybe, maybe, maybe work on that. I don't know. I've uh, been in, been in, been in talks, so uh, we'll see. Maybe some uh, limited edition, big old box with a collectible. Who knows? Who knows, guys? Yeah. Nobody knows. We have an address you can send it to. Okay, so that is Streets of Rogue. That is Matt, and you are awesome, Matt. Um, and uh, now you got me super excited. I was excited already after looking at it, but now I, I'm actually just going to clear the slate, and we're going to um, dive in because I can't. I can't have Andy just showing off you know what i mean when we start streaming together and playing together i can't just have him sh- showing off i, have to I buy all the best games dude I, it's all no 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 no, no, no. absolutely not you no. you started <laughs> off by talking about some goddamn waifu pinball game so don't talk to me about you playing you buying the best games you buy you, just, you, you just buy the most games <laughs> <laughs> you, you buy the most games that's what you do. you say the words waifu pinball ears will perk up my friend <laughs> <laughs> that is a fact. That's a scientific a fact. I guess you got a point. <laughs> uh, speaking of scientific facts, we have some news to go over. Uh, I know it's only been a couple of days since you last got news from us, so it's a little light on the news, but there is news nonetheless. None the less. There you go. Um, that's the word I was looking for. So let's get yeah. into the Nintendo News Report. Andy, hit us up with this first bit of news. So this kind of caught me off guard. This uh, Brazil hosted a unofficial Nintendo Direct, and they were really, really sure to get that point across. It was a please don't shut us down moment from Brazil. Like Nintendo, we're just about getting our developers together and showcasing their great games that we're working on. Please leave us alone. But the format, it's like a mirror image of a Direct. Did you watch this thing? It's like a twenty-five minute thing. No, I wasn't able to. I, I oh will. I will after after we we shut down. So give us the rundown. Tell us what happened. Well, you know, they show off games like Chroma Squad. They talked about Dundara for a while. Um, I'm trying to think what else was on there. They show off twenty-five games. They talked about Mario Kart Eight for some reason. It was it was pretty neat. Now, a part of the reason for this was to bring awareness to the fact that they don't have a Brazilian. Um, either language uh, version of the, their normal yes. Nintendo directs. They don't really cater to Brazilian audiences. And they were trying to say, Hey, here are 25 games, 25 developers here in Brazil that are supporting the Nintendo switch. We're here too. please include us. That was kind of, and there was a, a petition to go around with this. That was uh, to get, uh, I guess it's, uh, Portuguese or they have they have Portuguese Spain yeah, they were, version or they like were showcasing a lot of games are going to be in Portuguese which is kind of neat right yeah so like it, it's it was for it was for it wasn't just to say hey let's toot our own horns this was for a good cause this is f- because there's right. a huge audience that is being uh, for lack of a better term ignored right now and they wanted to bring attention to that so kudos to you guys and uh, I will check it out I, I honestly I, for, I forgot it our schedule, uh, recording schedule thing is thrown all off the, these next two weeks because you're going to Japan, and it it's it, it makes me it makes me sad. Well, 
that you're well I also I learned one neat thing on oh, that neat, but a fun fact about Brazil and their pricing with the Switch. Uh-huh. The Switch the Switch costs four seventy nine in Brazil, uh-huh. and games can cost eighty dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I hear, I hear a lot of people there. They they buy a Switch and they they buy all their games on the eShop because it's region free. Right. So that makes sense. Yeah. So it does help alleviate the cost, but they're hoping this could help draw attention from Nintendo. Like, hey, can you at least lower your console? Because Microsoft and Sony have much cheaper consoles available in Brazil. Right. Right. Nintendo. Hmm. That's a little. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder why yeah. that is. Um, all right, moving along. Uh, Matt, do you have any thoughts on the on the Brazilian situation here? <laughs> on the on the no. Brazilians? No, no. I honestly, I I, I know nothing. Um, sorry, I know nothing. <laughs> we've had we've had a few on our show. Um, uh, you know the the folks that uh, that created Dundara, where I think we're our first. Oh, yeah, guest. I've heard of that game actually. Fantastic. It's funny. Game. I. It's funny. Actually, actually, um, I remember post. I remember them posting on Tig. You know TigSource.com. I don't. T- Tigsaurus, oh, it's it's like this these forums where a lot of indie game developers uh, post like early versions of their game is Tigsaurus. It's kind of like the main hub for that stuff, or at least it was. I first posted on Streets of Rogue back there, and yeah, I remember them posting about that game years ago there. And, like, you know, I responded. I was like one of the first responders to their their post. This was like 2015 or something like that. So just yeah. going to bookmark this page right now. <laughs> it's a beautiful. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Yeah, it really is a, a beautiful video game. So, uh, good luck to all of you down there in Brazil. Um, get it, get it done. Keep pushing. Keep fighting the fight. Um, second bit of news here, and this one was one that pissed off a lot of people, and then confused more people, and then I had to, <clears throat> excuse me, put out some fires in our Discord because uh, Nintendo Dual Screen Super Fan and Resident Idiot Zach started flailing around like a dumb idiot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Nintendo announced uh, that there is a new base Switch model that is going to be slowly replacing the current Switch model. Um, it has, they don't necessarily speak on what the changes are physically inside the device, but what they are saying is that this is going to be a improved battery life type situation. So, it's it's much like a the PSP 2000 and the PSP 3000 those iterative little leaps just kind of like quality of life situations. So the model number is HAC-001-01 uh, um, and if you look on the UPC I believe it has the X what is it uh, XKW is the UPC there. Um, it it raises the battery life by about 20%. So you're getting what the OG model gets two and a half to six and a half hours of battery life in handheld mode. This is going to get four and a half to nine hours of battery life. This, of That's course, more than 20%. It's like 33% or uh, so, right? Yeah, uh, tw- uh, is it? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's a, it's a well, ma- math is hard, guys. I think it was 26%. <laughs> Let me see. 7.5. And then I have a. I, so I'm, I'm a construction. Are you doing math now? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a construction right. estimator, so it's... I have a percentage calculator. 26.66% increase okay. in power. Uh, in battery life. Um, so is could this be the... Could they have put the new Tegra chip in there to Doubtful. lessen the heat output, thus needing less fan power to make this thing a little, you know, run more efficiently? Who knows? Maybe is it a new screen? Did they get a new part that uses less power? Who knows? But either way, it's, it's going to be out in August. It's going to start replacing all the OG models. So... There's that, and uh, sorry, Multizi. I know you just bought your Switch. You were waiting for I something. I was gonna say, do you think that will stall? That will stall some of the sales. <sighs> if it's a better, it's a slightly better option. I mean, for me, I play most of my games in in dock mode, and when even when I'm on handheld, I never really care about the the battery life wearing out. Never an issue for me. I'm not playing for like hours and hours on end in handheld. I think it's super smart for them to do mm-hmm. that because they, they now they have. So they're, they're definitely going to want to sell their old stock, right? But now they have a month to do it, essentially. Um, but guess what? We just said what's coming out this week. And Fire Emblem Three Houses is going to sell Switches, Switch consoles. So yes, it is people Switch. are not going to wait a month. Yeah, I, I really don't think it's going to stall sales. And I'll, I'll tell yeah. you why. Because most people are not as keenly aware of this stuff as, as exactly. you know, we are. So, yeah, the average person just has, it's not. this is not on their radar, you know. Yeah, the average person's a big dumb idiot. Uh, speaking of big <laughs> dumb idiots, we fell for uh, <laughs> we fell for some of those uh, one of those leaks uh, 
one of those supposed leaks for a release date of Luigi's Mansion last week. But now we have official word of when Luigi's Mansion is coming out. It was some Germany thing. I don't know. Somebody leaked something. But they said it was, it was coming a reliable out. source. It was. It was. A it source. was but, yeah. you know, we're still idiots. Um, so <laughs> October 4th was the rumored release. But it has actually been announced that in, the, in America, by Nintendo of America... Uh, I'll just read the tweet here. When Luigi's friends go missing on vacation, it's up to our reluctant hero to save them from the ghosts in the Last Resort Hotel, which is a great name for the hotel. Last Resort. That's awesome. Uh, Join forces with Luigi, slam ghosts, and prepare for a spooky treat when Luigi's Mansion 3 arrives to the Nintendo Switch on 1031. (laughs) You know, there's one more spooky thing coming out at the same time, Steven, that was announced today. Doom, doom. And that's the Resident Evil Triple Pack. Resident Evil. Coming out on the 29th. You can get Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 for 60 bucks. No, you can't. Ain't that a bargain? No, you can't. Yeah, it says no, right here. No, you can't. You Resident get Resident Evil. Evil 4, and then you have to Triple have pack. a big enough <laughs> fucking memory card to download 5 and 6. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you still pay that one low price for those three games. God damn it, Capcom. <laughs> God damn it, Capcom. My mom, mom. Speaking of Capcom, it's time to get into the hype zone. And boy, this is a good oh, one. Oh, what the fuck? This, this is just This is nutty. a good one. Matt, are you ready for this hype zone? Because holy shit balls. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you, well, yeah. you should be. Because we're going we're gonna take a trip down. We're, we're going to connect 1991 to 2019. What do you think has happened between... What, do you, what, what story arc here could we possibly be talking about that started in 1991 and ends here in 2019 street fighter holy shit very good uh, now he's cheating because I, I said capcom now no. ne- <laughs> <laughs> so what was guys a legend just as big if not bigger than street fighter in 19 in 1991 i mean in terms of video games in or just terms in general of just pop culture and the world the new kids on the block. Good good guess. The answer is Mike Tyson. And oh. according in Kotaku, oh my god, this is just crazy. So apparently he just learned now, six AM today this was posted, so it was probably two days ago, just learned about M Bison slash Balrog. <laughs> Uh, oh wow just now learned about uh, this so in I mean, america <laughs> so <laughs> in, in japan balrog is called m bison in apparently capcom was and this is coming from the article apparently capcom was concerned about legal liability and changed the character's name to balrog which was m bison's name in japan so they just name swapped so they showed him pictures of balrog and he go and he just looks at it and he's like wow <laughs> and he had no idea that this was the thing and also in that video he plays mario kart 8 and horribly um but that's neither here nor there so they asked him if you've ever seen this character before and his response was never in a million years i'm really honored with that impersonation of me that was his quote about yeah. it listen what was it his ears that were bitten off because how did he not hear about this <laughs> <laughs> i don't understand how you can go like decades not knowing that it's a spitting well, image of him i know to, to be uh, you'd think somebody would have mentioned it. i mean to be right. fair it's, it's not the most visible like public it's not like chun li where everybody knows who chun li is where you got a Nicki minaj song and all that but you don't have like a, a balrog <laughs> song right but still i mean he, yeah, he also think he uh, at some point. He also uh, may not have uh, remembered word. correctly, yeah. uh, because it said Tyson. It's at the end here. It says Tyson had heard about M Bison on his podcast in April, then calling the game creators "quote dirty motherfuckers" and <laughs> quote, "jackasses." <laughs> when when ESPN showed Tyson the Street Fighter Two bugle list, he replied, "quote Holy moly, does he look like me?" End quote. Uh. Yes, In the clip, does which is like seen below, Mike. Tyson does mention that there might be a serious lawsuit. <laughs> oh. This so, is pretty hype, boys. This is go. like... This is it. <laughs> that's, that's about as hype as it gets. If we, Now, obviously, we have to get Mike Tyson on the show. 
All right, this is the next step. Yeah, <laughs> next level shit. And we were just discussing in our top <laughs> ten boss battle it. conversation in our bonus episode for our Patreon supporters. Yes, patreon.com slash NTS podcast. So I, I love how we it all comes full circle. Plug, plug, wink, wink, plug, 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 wink, wink. <laughs> plug, plug. Mike Tyson, wink. That is indeed. Um, Andy, are you ready with Ooh. the retro game club? I have a game. I'm very excited about it. It's, it's, it's done a great game. I'm, I'm ashamed that, that I chose wow, we're it. We're getting but, free hints here, Matt. So, but we're here. This is good stuff. So I'm hoping Matt is uh, well versed in horrible games. Perfect. Oh yes, oh yes. All right, Matt. This is how the Retro Game Club works. I don't know if you've listened to the show before, but this is a fun segment. A lot of people love this segment, and it is a lot of fun. It's a little game show that we like to play here. Andy and we alternate every week. Andy isn't currently in the lead, but Andy's going to give us ten clues about a retro game that is on a Nintendo console from the GameCube and previous, uh, or handheld. Excuse me. Um, each after each clue, we can guess what what the game is the sooner we guess it the more points we get however we only have three total guesses so you got to be careful with okay. your, your flippantly throwing guesses around okay um gotcha. if we would like to ask a yes or no question we could do so but we forfeit one of our guesses okay mm-hmm. so if we, if we feel like we might be in a certain direction and we want to you know narrow it down a little bit we could ask a yes or no question just like you know like 20 questions or something like that um do you understand the rules I do, yes. All right, so if we if we get it in the first clue, we get 10 points. In the second clue, 9 points, and, and it goes down to 0 until we don't get it. So Andy's winning 25 to 17. Uh, he did start the season this year, so I could catch up a little bit here. Last week's game was Sin and Punishment, which is the one I chose. Um, and I think you guys got 4 points, 3 points, 3 points. 3 points, I think. But either way. I'm a little behind, so I'm, I'm going to lean on you a little bit, Matt, because I am awful at this. All right, okay. Andy. A game that I created, and on day one of this podcast, I am awful at. Okay. All right. 108 episodes ago. Andy. Let's, let's do this. Let's do. Let's play the Retro Game Club. This game was released in the 1990s for the Nintendo Entertainment System. An NES 1990s okay. game. Okay. All right. So late, late uh, era. Okay. Late era. Okay. I th- you know, I, Andy likes to play games. He likes to take elements <laughs> of of the game that the guest <laughs> is bringing to talk about. He likes to take elements and pick a game in that genre, or it or that has like some sort of weird tie. So it could be oh the word streets, for example, like a Streets of Rage or something. It could be it could have the word rogue. It could be a roguelite. It could be a game with multiple classes in it. There's going to be some sort of tie. So right now. That's where I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus. Or I'm playing 4D chess, and I've made you believe that over the course of 100 <laughs> episodes. Just for this to get moment? To this moment. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I, I have no guesses right now, so let's get our yeah. next clue for nine points. All right. The game features five stages, the first four of which can be played in any order. Ooh, five stages. First four can be played in any order. Uh, I have I have like one idea right now. Okay, it might not even be it might not even be it. I, I mean I can't say it because it's uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah that would be a guess. So uh, yeah, I, no, I don't we know. we uh, could talk uh, amongst ourselves. Okay, um, yeah, the only thing I can think of right now is is like Darkwing Duck on the Nintendo. Uh, it's, it's 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 a Capcom thing. I know you guys were talking about yeah, Capcom. Yeah, see, right? okay, so, see, I like where I, you're I going. I think I think that was uh, you could show, you could choose any stage in that. Um, so that's, that's the thing that Darkwing Duck in my mind right now was or street or is it Street Fighter 2010 maybe oh, we we had we that. had the Street Fighter 20 whatever it was 15 or whatever the hell the game was okay, 20, we had that yeah. 2015 <laughs> we had that on the show before so the final fight okay. the final fight okay. yes yeah um <laughs> and I think that was worst. one that Andy got zero points on um. No, I think I'll be one or two points on that one. Listen, I for for nine points, I'm okay with guessing that. I'm okay with going with your intuition. So I, I'm more than happy to do that. So Andy, is this game for nine points? Is it Darkwing Duck? That's a great guess, but it's sadly not Darkwing Duck. Okay, understood. Ah, okay. Understood. Okay. All right. Next clue for eight points. And there's trouble you call DW. Okay. This game was featured in a Play Choice 10 arcade machine. <gasps> oh, okay. Hmm. And for those who don't know, the Play Choice 10, it was a series of arcade cabinets that had about 
10 or so Nintendo games. All right, well, um, I'm going to assume it's like early 90s then in that case, because I don't... Well, yeah, any, NES, I think the last game came out to, on the NES proper in like 93, 94, I think. Yeah, and I don't think these play choice... I've, I've never seen a play choice 10 with something that was like beyond like, you know, like 91 or something like it that. It had Skyhawk um, on it, Captain Skyhawk. That was... I don't know if that was the 80s, though. Oh, uh, that was a great game. It was a good game. Um, uh, I think they had uh, they had a lot of those Disney games, though, so you might be on the right track. Oh, they did. Uh, maybe they maybe, did. maybe my maybe my memory of the Play Choice tens is hazy. Then maybe they did go uh, on further than I thought they did. Um, Gauntlet okay, was yeah. on one. Uh, that's eighties. Um, Hogan's Alley was on one. Um, they used to have. So I had this this local arcade that had one of these cabinets, and I forever thought that it was like they they created it because i i didn't know that the like i was a dumb idiot kid i was six years old whatever i was so i didn't know like these things existed but um my grandfather used to bring home those like bootleg nintendo games with like 100 games on it and stuff like that from like funko land (laughs) um so like i just thought that this was funko land yeah like yeah exactly funko land Um, no i didn't even know they sold as a funko land that's that's news to me but it it was before gamestop bought them out um but yeah he used to go out and buy like used games and stuff like that um uh, so let's think um hmm yeah I, i got nothing right now They did a lot of licensed games on that Cap. That was they're all are they all Capcom games? I think they are, right? Like the, it's a Capcom thing, right? Uh, Play Choice Ten. I Captain Capcom. Scout was that a Capcom no, game? No, that wasn't. helps you. Oh, okay. That was all nothing right. on a Capcom game. Um. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, yeah, I think maybe. All right, let's get one? let's get the next clue. All right. Uh, ooh, this is a good one. This game is what Super Mario Brothers Two was to Doki Doki Panic. Okay, so Super Mario Two was the American version, so that means that whatever came out here was re- a reskinned version of something from overseas. Something. Uh, um, yeah, right. That would make sense. Or. Yeah, I guess that's probably that's probably right. Or it could potentially be just a completely different, like you know, like Ghostbusters Two. I think was completely different on Nintendo than it was in Famicom or something. But uh, mm. but uh, you're probably right about your about uh, yeah, just a different. It could, it could also be a different sequel, like a game that was a sequel to something that wasn't originally part of the series that they reskinned. That could be the tie to Mario Two as well. Um. Mm. I know they, they those games that like the Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle were always like uh, were always like some version some version of some some just generic kind of game they did in Japan and they would always like they would always tack that onto like different licenses like they, I think they tacked it onto Ghostbusters actually come to think of it uh, in, on Game Boy at least mm. like that that play style um, but that's probably not it I don't know it's just. Uh... Well, he he did he did say it was NES, so um, hmm. All right, let's get another clue, Andy. Yeah. All righty, let's see what we got here. Oh, okay, this developer has made games for some of the most noteworthy publishers in gaming, including Namco, Activision, Taito, Konami, Sega, and yes, even Capcom. Tecmo. Um, no, Taito, not Tecmo. I didn't say no, Tecmo. <laughs> no, you said no. No, I'm saying the developer. You said right. <laughs> no, the, the yeah, they worked with. Oh, you're guessing about the developer. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out the developer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good for you. Good job. Uh, developer, not, it's, it's developer, like, as in like as in a a a group of developers and not like a single person. So uh, this but, developer like, has worked on games for many publishers. And I gave you a whole list of those uh, that they've worked yeah. with before. Hmm. So be back rare? then, all right, back rare, then, maybe? yeah, that was going to say back then, it was, Rare yeah. did a lot, Atlas did a lot of weird shit. Um, like before they became the Atlas, we know. Um, hmm. Micronics? And they do, uh, was that mostly Capcom? Uh, hmm. 
Aww. I mean, I want to say rare just because, like, you know, it's so many games for the Nintendo for so many publishers. I don't know if they but did they do any for like Capcom or, or did what was the choices the, the, the publishers there? T- uh, uh, Tyco, Hudson um, Soft maybe. Did, did they Hudson do Soft a... did a lot of uh, yeah no uh, yeah I think yeah, so. They published, but here's the thing: he might be trying to trick us up. So this might this might have been. <laughs> This might have been still published by the developer. Like it's just that this developer has also done stuff for other publishers. I think. Can yeah. you? Is that how you phrase the 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 clue, Andy? So I did not say if the developer also self published, but the developer has worked with a lot of publishers. So this game could be, could have been published by one of those people, one of those companies, as far as we know. So it could be published by Konami or Capcom or Sega. I think get, it, get it us down now. I think I, I want to go with Atlas. probably not Sega um, because this is on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, so. yeah. I want to go with Atlas because Atlas is was one of those companies that was just making games just for everyone. Um, uh, let me think of the cat, the uh, Atlas games. Uh, back, oh man, the nineties though. That's the other thing. Oh, man, your, your your history uh, is pretty pretty strong. Like you should be on Retronauts or something like that. The, the, re- <laughs> so the, only, the reason why this is, is like a weird thing is because of researching for the Retro Game Club. Like I'm always looking... I, typically I like to pick games that I've played. Um, and But recently I've been going back and just looking into publishers and developers and stuff yeah. like that. And you know, or games that I think Andy would find funny that I pick, even you know whether they're good or bad, they might just be you know an interesting story to tell. Sure, sure. Um, Piss me off, basically. Essentially, yes. Um, like that surf shop game. Oh my god. I have I have a I have a guess, but I don't want to you I don't want to use this Hold guess. Hold on, I'm thinking. Oh, I'm I'm. It could be skate or die. Uh, you had to do like. Oh, I, I really like game. where Matt where Matt's heads at. <laughs> we did that's have TNC surf designs in this. On the yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, yeah, right. I, I love where Matt's head is at. <laughs> Which means you're way off. So um, <laughs> move along, move along. Uh, do you want to venture a guess, or should we go to the next clue? What do you think? What are we thinking, boys? I kind of want to know what game was reskinned for this because uh, that's got to be what it was. All oh, right that clue also so wait okay mario 2 was reskinned to be mario because people wouldn't recognize the character or like those characters here in in the states so it's got to be they got they had to have changed it to either be a licensed game for like a big cartoon character or something like that. So the Disney that's, thing that, fits. That's why I was thinking Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle because like oh, I, I think it. that might have started life in Japan as something completely different. Um, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, let's do another clue. How many points is this? Six All points? Right. Seven points? Let's see. Let's see what we got here. What we got. We got. I think this is for six points. Okay. The game implemented one-hit deaths, but you can also die if time runs out. God, I hate those mechanics. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, say, say that again one more time. So, one-hit kills. So, if okay. you hit once, you're dead. But if yeah. time ran out, you'd also die. So there's right, two ways to die. Just, there's like, no health meter. Library. All right, so. It's just, think of it like uh, Contra in Castlevania. Or, you, know, you have one-hit kills and the timer against you. <laughs> Oh, is this, oh, wait, I think I might have an idea. Could it be Contra Force? Contra Force? Oh, fuck, Who would have designed Contra? A, no, that would have been weird, Konami Konami, weird, no? Well, they would well but, but, but hold on. But Contra Force, Contra Force was something else. Uh, I mean, that that didn't start life as a Contra game. That was not originally a Contra game. Um, and I, th- I think you chose stages. So, I mean, that's not a real Contra game. Mm. Uh, they just brought it over to the, the, the U.S. because they... Slapped on Contra, I think, because I thought it would sell more or something. Uh, so, what was the name? Yeah. Oh shit! What was the name of the game where? Fuck! I I don't know if this was on playtime. Here, here's play a here's track. a fun here's a fun bonus fact. Oh, God, there is a there is a Contra game in the players that player ten choice thing, the arcade games. 
<laughs> so it's not going to be that. He's, he's okay. All right. Um, <laughs> what was the what was the um the game where you shot uh, uh a giant uh, like those um like from fucking what's it called uh, uh like those Acme big giant fists. There was a game. Oh man. Um, I keep I keep thinking of Roger Rabbit, but it's not Roger Rabbit, but it's like Roger Rabbit, but it's not. Um, fuck. Uh, yeah, not really. Not. Uh, Is there um, nothing coming to mind here? Big cartoon fists. It's, I'm not thinking of. Uh, I might be thinking of one of the Disney games, but I but I don't think Atlas made any of the Disney games. Um, Again, I I could have sworn that might have that might be that. Uh, one of the Bugs Bunny games, uh, the top they blow, top cat? They blow out. Was there a Top Cat yeah. game? Top Cat. Do you remember Top Cat? Mm-hmm. Top Cat was awesome. Hanna Barbera. Could it be a Hanna Barbera mm-hmm. thing? Um, I think your next clue may give you a little nudge in the right direction. All right, this for oh, five okay. points. Next clue. This game was based on a license. Is it a, is it a Flintstones <laughs> game? <laughs> Flintstones. <laughs> no, it's the Jetsons. The was Jetsons. There, there Sorry, a, there was a Jetsons game. <laughs> I'm kidding, but there was a Jetsons game. Yeah, I think for Nintendo, if I recall correctly. I'm pretty mm. sure that's real. I'm pretty sure that's real. <laughs> it's not a license. <sighs> um, trying to think of like the weird cartoons, man. I, I don't know. Oh, I think yeah, this I, next one's gonna gonna is like the ultimate. Game. You said that about the last one, you fucker. Well, <laughs> it, it helps confirm something. This is like the ultimate. This is the ultimate one. This is the ultimate. If you, for if four you don't points. get me here, I have I have no faith in you. All right, okay. this is it. If okay. you guys can't get it with this one, I am I am I am ashamed for myself okay. and for both of you. I think okay. I know what it is. I think I All know right. what it is. So let's see. Let's get this, this next clue. This game came bundled with a coupon for a dollar off Domino's pizza. A dollar off do- Okay, okay. <laughs> it's Yonoid. It's Yonoid. Are we locking in Yonoid? Uh, I wait, don't want to. No, no, it's not wait, Yonoid. No, no, wait, that's the other one. It's, uh, wait, there's, there's another one that there was, there's there another was, Domino's pizza? Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, Are we locking in Yonoid? It was like ro- Rocket Cats hold on, hold on, or some, on, some shit like that. No, you, you might be right. It's possible that it's it possible was, I can imagine Domino's bundling with something else. It was like Rocket Cats or something. I'm telling you, I know. Oh, man, it can't be Yonoid. I don't think it's Yonoid. Um, I mean, I guess it how could. Many, how many games had pizza you know coupons fine. in them? <laughs> okay. Okay, like fine. I had, I had the, the Do, Ninja Turtles game had a personal pan pizza coupon. It did. Uh, and that didn't make any sense. Yeah. Yeah, but no, no, no. It's it's. Oh, is that the name of the game though? Is it Rocket Cats? There was a game that took place in New York City, and it stars a cat, like a New York uh, street cat, like like top like top cat. All right, you know what? He might have been from Chicago though. I'll, I'll give you guys this: the game does take place in New York City. Yeah, it, I don't know if it's that's the name of it. Is it? Is it? That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a little bonus cats? clue. A little bonus it's, clue. I think uh, it's like Rocket Cats or something. Yeah, Guys, I don't, I don't know. Google this it. is uh, Google it. St- Steven, you gotta make a guess or we're moving on. Fuck, I don't want to guess you annoyed. I feel like he's trying to throw us off. We can guess here. Rocket Cats and see what happens. What can I tell you? What'd you <laughs> say? Mean... What did you say? <laughs> did you hear that? Did you hear that, Matt? Did you hear him fuck that up? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What did he say? He I, told, I did he, not. He told me to guess Rockin' Cats. <laughs> Rockin' cats, not rocket cats. Oh, it's a t- fuck. <laughs> is it rockin' cats? Are you are you locking in ro- rockin' cats? Oh, I'm locking cats? this in, and I swear to God, if it's Yonoid, you're gonna die. I'm gonna All murder right. you. Uh, so just so you guys know, if the answer is wrong, we move on to the next clue. That's it right. is not rockin' cats. God, <laughs> We're moving damn on. Damn it! <laughs> oh my God, is it Yonoid? Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, let it be known, no Matt, you that your own either. teammate did not trust you and your instinct. I, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with me not, not trusting him. I don't not, trust you. Not. <laughs> I don't trust your bullshit uh, 
Hint giving. <laughs> New York City. It's got. I, mean, I guess it's got to be you annoyed, but you're, I don't remember. Well, you but you're, did, 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 it, did it have? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't remember that having a, it's a level. Your main so. weapons were a yo-yo oh. and a pizza crusher. Okay. Okay. How, yeah. how many games for, have a pizza crusher? For three it has points, to be is this yo annoyed? It is yo annoyed. God All right. Damn it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That, I mean, that makes sense, course, but I, I thought right. you were trying to throw me off with that bullshit. The coupon bullshit. Listen, Matt knew it. The metagame is Matt worse. Matt fucking knew it. The metagame is hard. Yeah. Man. Yonoid's a yeah, bad game. Is is it? Uh, did, Yonoid. Did, uh, did, that actually, wait, did that actually get released, or was it the California Raisins one that didn't get released? Oh, my God. I think that was also released. No, one of them didn't get released. Like, it, <laughs> it actually did not come out on, like, it was not at retail. Wait, I gotta Google this right now as we speak. There yeah. were a lot of those games. I want, I want a Mrs. Buttersworth uh, pinball game. <laughs> no, like, like I think one of those two games, California Raisins or Joe Noid, it was, it was, um, it was like in all the magazines they gave it reviews and everything, just never came out. Well, I see here. Let's see, The Grape Escape. Yeah, is what it was called. Uh-huh. Oh, I gotta save this my back pocket for Retro Game Club. Uh, oh yeah, it was canceled due to the California Raisins dwindling popularity. And the decline of raisin sales in the late '80s and early '90s. <laughs> so, ra- no joke though. California raisins were everywhere when I was no yeah. sun, oh, sun made, yeah. sun made raisins. Those little with the little red box. Oh my god! Could you hey. guys? You can't make this shit up. The developer's name for, for California raisins was Radiance. <laughs> oh boy! This has been Nintendo Dual Screens podcast. Wow. We're part of the Proven Gamer <laughs> Podcast Network, which includes Trophy Horse, a PlayStation podcast, Game Stuff, a general games discussion podcast, and PG Spoilers, a pop cultural spoiler, you know, podcast that's unedited, unfiltered. They are publishing tomorrow because I helped get the episode on the back end, so I know what they're with the sneak peek with this thing is. And they uh, spoiled uh, the movie Bright, the Netflix movie. Um, that's what they go over and they discuss that and they and do a little deep dive on that one. So go to, over to provinggamer.com. They are our gracious hosts of this podcast, uh, and, and check out all those other shows that they got. And, uh, you could also comment on our show, which posts each and every Monday up on provinggamer.com. You can make, do comments on, on the articles there as well as dualscreens.com. Um, if you want to follow the show on social media, we are at NDS Podcast. I am at Batchild27. Andy is at PantsGuy. And Matt, where could everybody find you? Where could everybody find your video game on the social medias? Yeah, so you can find me at Twitter, MadGuy90, M-A-D-G-U-Y-9-0. 9-0 doesn't even mean anything. It's not when I was not when I was born. It has no meaning whatsoever. Um, you can find the video, the, the Streets of Rogue, uh, yeah, on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, the, all those eShops. Yeah. You got a, a Facebook page or anything like that? Nah. Cool beans. Nah, no Facebook. Any super top secret Discord you want people to know about? There is a Streets of Rogue Discord, Hell and yeah. Um, yeah, if you if you have the game, um, there's a well, there's a link to it, I guess, on the Steam forum. And if you have the game on Steam, then you can get to the Discord. Maybe I should make the Discord more visible to people who own the console version somehow, though. Um, Look at that. We're breaking ground idea. here. All right. So uh, that's awesome. Um, if you want to uh, check us out on Twitch, you can do so. We are at twitch.tv slash dual screens streams. Uh, you can also check out our YouTube page, which you can you know grab on uh, dual screens.com because we don't have one of them quick, quick little links. We don't have one of those youtube.com slash whatever's because we only have 35 subs because you all suck and you won't go over there and sub to us. Do it. You big jerks. Type in Nintendo Dual Screens. That's dual with an E. It'll say, did you mean D- dual with an A? And you got to be like, fucking no. I know what I typed, YouTube. I know what I typed. And then you could subscribe to us. And then you could hit the bell. And you'd be notified when we put something up. So yeah, do that. Special thanks to our contributors, Zazu Pitts of Sound Productions for our theme song, 16-Bit Attack. Thank you, Matt Murray of, um, well, Game Stuff. And he's a contributing writer to us, but he also makes our little Twitch overlays. Thank you, Dan Colonna of Dinosaur Machines and Hit Buttons Gaming for our Nintendo Dual Screens logo. And thank you, Andrew Douglas, uh, for all of our podcast art. And you can follow him on social media at Angimoto, A-N-G-I-M-O-T-O. Remember, support us on the Patreon. And if you do support us on the Patreon at the $5 hair uh, tier, guess what you get? That's right. You get pre-show and, and or post-show audio when Andy and I just go and blabber on like 
co- two complete idiots about whatever we feel like talking about, you could do that. You just go to patreon.com slash NDS podcast. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. It, you were an absolute pleasure to hang out with. I cannot wait to dive into Streets of Rogue. Thank you so much for coming on. Really All right, well, thanks for, ha- thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Andy, are we going to try and uh, give away a copy of this bad boy for our, for our Twitter I, I contest? Think, I think we have to. I think we're going to. I that's think that's gonna what happen. we're going to do. So yeah. that's, that's, that's the contest this week, folks. So remember, to be entered to win a copy of Streets of Rogue on the Nintendo Switch, that's what we're going to do it for, um, you have to retweet this episode on Twitter. That's it. That's all you have to do. We will close entries on the the day that we record the podcast of I'm not doing that this week because we only had you only had two like one and a half days to do it but the following week yes you will have until probably like Friday or Saturday to enter the contest so do it follow us at NDS podcast look for the post uh, of this episode and retweet it that's all you have to do and you will be entered to win a copy um, that is it folks uh, Andy is there anything you want to tell the kids before we go. Yeah, I want to announce next week's guest before we leave. So, Spoil- spoiler alert, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Andy is going alert. to Japan, which and means- the Philippines and the Philippines, yes. which means we are recording over Asia next week. <laughs> which means we are recording in a weird schedule. So, at when tomorrow from this recording is when we are recording the following week's show. So it's not going to be news heavy. It's going to be conversation heavy and interview heavy. Um, right. If there's anything that news that breaks, of course we'll talk about it. Right. But I just wanted to preface that, and Andy, you can tell us who the guest is. But I, I feel, given the uh, the scope and the right. size and success of this game, having a whole episode to it kind of makes sense. It's a huge smash hit in recent Switch history. I'm talking about the Messenger. Indeed. Indeed. Oh, Sabotage man. Studios is going to be on the show. Yes. Very exciting stuff. Very Super excited. excited about that one. Uh, we hung out with them at PAX East. Really good group of people over there. Um, and I uh, can't wait to have them on the show to talk about the Messenger and the DLC and the Ninja Vacation, whatever, the Pacific, the, the island. Yeah, so it's called it's the fun. Ninja Vacation Plus. New Vacation Plus. Yes, that's what it is. That's it, folks. Escape the California Raisins. Escape the Raisins if you can. This has been Nintendo (laughs) Dual Screens episode 108 for the week of July 22nd, 2019. Thank you, Andy, as always. Thank you, Matt. And as always, please be excellent to each other.